WordPress has become a popular solution for individuals who want to have a blog on their website. And actually, with the as WordPress has evolved, most people are using WordPress for full content management solutions uh, because you don't have to use it just for a blog. You can use it for regular site pages uh, and all sorts of content. Uh, this is kind of good and bad for web developers because WordPress blogs are really easy to install, uh, which means a little less time on, for the web developer to bill at, uh, especially with companies like GoDaddy uh, through their hosting solutions where a WordPress installation is pretty much a one-click process. Uh, most clients, however, want their blog to be customized, and there's a lot of themes that can be downloaded, but ultimately you need to get into those theme files and do a little uh, editing of, of the web page itself. Um, most web developers to edit web pages use Dreamweaver. Uh, however, Dreamweaver traditionally hasn't been the, the greatest tool for editing a WordPress blog unless you're really comfortable with the code, uh, mainly because it's not able to render out any of the site files or, uh, or any of the PHP code that goes into the WordPress blog. Well, Dreamweaver CS5, they actually added some capabilities that make this a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is take you through actually setting up a WordPress blog on your local computer. That way you can test and edit the blog uh, without too much trouble uh, using Dreamweaver. And then when, all, when you're done editing, you can take those theme files and upload those to your web server where the, the rest of the world can see it. Now this process involves a couple of steps. The first thing is I need a testing server. And the reason I need a testing server on my machine is because WordPress uses PHP, which is a server-side programming language, and you need to have a special server to see this. Testing servers are really easy to set up. I use a server for Windows here called XAMPP, uh, X-A-M-P-P. If you're on a Mac, you could Google search MAMP, M-A-M-P, uh, which is pretty much the same type of setup. Uh, there's also another one out there called WAMP, W-A-M-P. So you can kind of take your pick. Uh, I'm gonna, in this tutorial, I'm going to go through XAMPP. Uh, so if I go into the XAMPP website here, what I need to look for is the XAMPP for Windows. I said this is also available for OS X. There's a, there's a couple other servers out there as well. Um, and simply download uh, and install uh, the XAMPP server. I, I'm not going to go through that process. I pretty much don't do any customizing when I installed it. So if you follow the installation uh, instructions on this website, it shouldn't be a problem. Once it's installed, what you'll get, if you start up the XAMPP control panel, which it'll put a shortcut on your desktop, you'll see a little control panel that looks like this. And this is basically the control panel to the server. Now, if I hit start, this has started the web server. And like I said, this is basically a server running on your local machine. And the way I know that this web server is working uh, is actually if um, uh, I just hit the admin button here, it'll pull up um, a little local web page. Now notice this is running in localhost. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with server installations, you can configure this to be any kind of virtual host you want. We're not going to get that complicated here. Now localhost forward slash XAMPP, where is that pointing at? This is pointing at a directory in your C drive by default. Uh, this would also just be on your in your in your student folder on your Mac. It just it depends upon how you've customized your install, but by default, this is where it's going to install. Now, inside the XAMPP folder um, are a number of subfolders here that, that, that have to do with the Apache server that's here. The htdocs folder, this is the root folder. So you'll notice the URL, localhost forward slash XAMPP, that's actually browsing to this folder inside the htdocs folder and pulling up the index page that's here. And again, that's a page that's already installed by default with the XAMPP server. What I want to do in the htdocs folder is I want to make a folder for my blog so that I can go to localhost slash blog and see my, my website. So I'm going to make a folder called blog. And in this folder is where I want to put all the WordPress blog code. So I have to go and get that. I'm going to go to wordpress.org. I'm going to click the download to top here, uh, and I'm going to click to download WordPress. It's going to prompt me to save the file. Once the file is downloaded, you can open up that zip folder. 
I were to take all the content from here and extract it, I just want to put it in that XAMPP folder that I created. And in the blog folder. So I'm going to extract everything to that folder. All the contents of the WordPress zip are inside my blog folder. Now at this point, we're going to set up our site in Dreamweaver so that we can actually work with these files because there's a little configuration that has to happen. So I'm going to switch over to Dreamweaver. And I'm going to go up to the site. And I'm going to make a new site. I'm going to call it my XAMPP blog. And where I'm going to select this is that folder inside my XAMPP folder. So again, XAMPP, your htdocs, which is the web root of that, and then the blog folder. Now at the same time, I'm going to actually set up the server. I'm going to create a new server. I'm going to call this my XAMPP blog server. Since this is not my local machine, I can keep this as a local server. I'm going to indicate the folder, and it's actually the exact same folder. You, of course, can have these files saved in a different location, and that's fine. The last thing I need to put in here is what I want uh, Dreamweaver to browse anytime I'm previewing this, this, this content. Now remember, XAMPP creates a local host, uh, or uses the local host, virtual host, on your computer. Um, that points to the htdocs folder that's inside that XAMPP installation. And I want it to look inside the blog folder. So I'm going to click Save. And I'm going to indicate that this is actually the testing server. Um, you can set up yet another server for the site. That's the remote server that you can push the files to when you're all done. That's one of the benefits of Dreamweaver CS5 is the ability to set up multiple servers within a site so you can test in different environments. So I'm going to click Save, and Dreamweaver now is going to kind of uh, cache all those different files and, and give me access.